Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're starting a brand new NHL 2023 franchise mode featuring the Vancouver Canucks. To make things realistic, we are going to try a special set of rules that will make this more hardcore. First off, trade difficulty will be set to hard. Second, we will attempt to adhere to real life trade clauses as per the cap friendly website. So for example, if a player like Oliver Ekman Larson, for example, has a no movement clause, we will adhere to that even though it doesn't exist in the game. So that means that OEL cannot be moved, he can't be traded, he can't be set down. Furthermore, we're gonna play with injuries, always being on. Our head coach will manage our lines. A special rule for signings, we cannot sign superstar players unless the team has made the playoffs in the year prior or has a robust enough depth chart that they could realistically win. I'm going to make an exception for this though. We can sign players if they are from British Columbia. You'll often see players wanting to return to their hometown in order to play. And to just expand on the superstar point a little bit as to why we're going to do that. In real life, players want to sign to teams that they think can win. So if you're a bottom feeder, if you're a bottom feeder team, there's pretty much no chance that a player like Austin Matthews would want to sign with you as they want to go chase a cup. So we want to make that realistic. A player that has a lot of status is only really going to want to sign with a team that actually has some potential of doing some damage in the postseason. Now on trades, we're going to try and be realistic about our trade returns on aging players. For example, JT Miller. If we're making a trade in season on a player who is pretty much a distressed asset, you're going to have to take back salary. So this also includes a player like Connor Garland. I don't really see too many scenarios where we can trade him to a contending team without taking back salary. Now this moves into our final rule here. Players past the age of 28 can't be traded to clearly rebuilding teams like Arizona or Chicago. So again, a player like JT Miller cannot be traded to a team like Arizona because there was no way in real life that Arizona would want to trade for JT Miller as they are rebuilding. It's completely counterintuitive to what they're trying to do. Now, that being said, you could trade a younger player to a rebuilding team as they might be a piece for their team in the future. So anyways, those are the special rules. We are going to stick to those. That is going to make a hopefully realistic simulation of what managing the Vancouver Canucks is like in 2023. So let's get into it. All right, so to start things off, we are beginning our campaign in the preseason of September 2022. And I want to give a shout out to the channel, Tony Hockey, who has given me this idea or inspired it at least to play with these expanded rules. I've proposed to him a little challenge where we see who can win a Stanley Cup first in our franchise modes. So we'll see if he is interested in doing that. Now, as for the plan of how we're going to build a contender, if you watch the Canucks, you probably know that they are a truly sad franchise in real life. The Canucks are a middle of the pack team at best with absolutely no cap space, no prospects. It's really, really bleak, pretty much. They have no cap space, they have no prospects. They're built like a win now team, except they don't win. So let me show you the lineup here. On our first line, we have a 29 year old JT Miller on an expiring deal set to make $8 million a year until he's 37 years old. We have Elias Pedersen at 23, our franchise player. We have Connor Garland, 26 and 85 overall. We have Bo Horvat, our 27 year old center who's on an expiring deal. We have Kuzmenko, we have Mikhaev, Lazar, Pearson, Hoglander, Dries on defense. We've got Quinn Hughes, Ethan Bear, OEL is signed for like another five years at a $7 million cap hit, which is absolutely disastrous. And you can see he is already declining at age 31. If you look at the cap hits of different defense groups amongst the NHL, the Canucks, I believe, are in the top five most expensive defense groups. And if you look at this group, it is awful. It is absolutely awful for a defense group that has more than 20 plus million dollars committed to it. So we're definitely going to have to do something about that. In terms of our goalies right now, it looks like Thatcher Demko is injured. So we've got Colin Delia and Spencer Martin. All right, so let's talk quickly about the contract situations that we have to navigate through. So JT Miller has a 
no movement clause that kicks in next year. Bo Horvat can be moved. Ilya Mikheyev has a 12 team no trade list. Tanner Pearson has a no movement clause for this year, which expires next year. On defense, Oliver Ekman Larson has a no movement clause and Tyler Myers also has a limited no trade list. So the basic strategy that we are going to take in order to build a contender will be to rebuild the Canucks. So we're not even going to try and let them play this season. We know what they are. They are not a good team. This is as good as they can be and they are just simply not a contender. So everything that we're going to do is going to be geared towards contention in mind, which means that everybody is up on the trading block except Pedersen and except Hughes. So we're going to try and build around them. So that even means that we are going to consider trading Demko as well. Now, the idea will be to accumulate assets. In sports team management, I really think that it's just about accruing more assets than the other teams in order to give yourself leverage and an advantage in trades, negotiations, and signings. So what we want to do is be efficient in our moves in order to accumulate more assets more efficiently than other teams so that we can eventually gain small competitive advantages which helps us to become a contending team. Let's start by making some moves. So we know what this roster can do. So let's start to basically sell as much as we can here. We'll start with some smaller deals and then we'll work our way up to the, the bigger ones. We're gonna start by just trading away some of our UFAs here. So we can see looking at the years left tab. So I like Kuzmenko. He's on a one year deal on an ELC, which is nice. Now, um, I wish that we could keep him. And uh, actually, no, we're gonna, we're gonna hold on this asset for a second. One thing that we should do with our RFAs at least is we should consider, we should check out what they want for contract extensions and see if it is uh, within reason. So Luke Shen here, we're gonna try and trade Luke Shen because he's on a one year deal that is expiring. All right, for Luke Shen, I found a trade I like. Two third round picks from the Winnipeg Jets this year and next year. We're gonna accept that. Now our next trade, is going to involve Travis Dermott, who is also expiring, age 25. By the time this team is going to be able to contend, he won't be a part of our group, slash won't be in the same age range. So we're gonna look to move him as well. If we can get some picks back, that would be great. All right, so here's a deal I like for Travis Dermott. We're gonna take it, again, two third round picks, one in 2023, one in 2024, nice and clean. We'll take the cap space and we will take the futures. Now, before we make any more deals here, I want to take a look at our contract situation, particularly that of the RFAs, to see if we can re-sign them. So we have a player like Ethan Bear here, who is an 83 overall at age 25. I'm wondering if, with more opportunity, this player could improve and we could sell him for a little bit more in the future. So we're going to take a look at what he would want. All right, it looks like we can't negotiate with Ethan Bear at this moment, so we'll have to wait a little bit longer. So we'll hold on to him for a while. Nils Hoglander. A three-year deal at 1.8. I think that's relatively reasonable, though I think with more opportunity, I think it's actually worthwhile to go longer on this player. So we're going to give him a five-year deal at 2.5 because I believe that there's some upside here. We'll see how this works out. This is a little bit of a risk, but he's 21. If this works out, then we have an extremely cheap player on a good deal. So we'll also take a look at, I guess we cannot negotiate with Kuzmenko quite yet. So we'll hold on to him for now. But as you can see, we have $6 million in cap space and we only have four players on expiring deals and they are key pieces of our team. So that's a little bit troubling. Let's continue to make some deals. Again, we're trying to rebuild, selling anything short of Hughes and Patterson. So whatever can be moved, we'll consider. And we're starting with some of the smaller fish before moving to some of the bigger stuff. So Ilya Mikheyev has a 12 team, no trade list. So we'll kind of just have to guess as to which teams he would be willing to go to, but we are definitely gonna look to move him. So I definitely don't think he would want to go to the Sabres or to the Coyotes. The Nashville Predators, they they have a lot of European players, maybe in this kind of mold. So I think this is something that we would be able to swing as well. So Ilya Mikheyev to the Nashville Predators for two third round picks. I'm gonna see if we can get a little more value out of this here by upping the draft pick quality. Will they do it for a second straight up? Done, okay. So we have just moved out Ilya Mikheyev for a second round pick, clearing up some cap space. We'll see if we can move Tucker Pullman. Tucker Pullman is on an awful deal, two and a half million dollars. So we'll see if there's anybody looking to take this player. The Florida Panthers are willing to trade a, sec a seventh round pick for him. So I think we'll have to take that. That makes us a little bit more efficient. 
For our next trade, let's try and move one of our big chips. We're gonna try and make a Horvat trade. We'll try to deal him to a team that we think makes sense in real life. So if you've followed any Canucks rumor stuff, some teams that have been linked to Horvat are maybe the Avalanche or the Blue Jackets. So I think maybe we'll take a look at what the Blue Jackets have uh, in their system. So I mean, one of the main things that I think Canucks fans desperately want back in a Horvat trade is a first round pick. Now this is gonna be tough. It looks like the trade value for these two picks is pretty even. So we'll try and add a sweetener in here. Yeah, they got a 19 year old top six forward prospect here. So we'll see if they take this deal. Horvat for a first and a prospect. So Horvat's value isn't even high enough to do that. Now, the reason that we're also going to trade to Columbus here, Columbus is not a rebuilding team. They clearly are sort of in a transitional middle phase, having signed Goudreau and having extended the line aim. So I think this is fair. Will they do it for just a first round pick? Wow, okay. So it seems that Columbus is not terribly interested in trading for Horvat. At least they're not terribly interested in moving out their first round pick to do that. So we're gonna look at some of their younger skaters. Now I think in real life teams would, as good as Horvat is, I'm not sure if teams would be willing to trade their absolute top prospect for a player like Horvat. But then again, he's on pace for 60 goals this year. So maybe, maybe that is possible. So maybe in this case, we'll see if one of these two players can, can do it. Now Kent Johnson here, has two years left. I mean, he's from he's from Vancouver, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we'd love to be able to trade for him. I highly doubt in real life they would ever consider that. But you're a check. Maybe that would be more realistic. So you're a check and a fourth for Bo Horvat. Let's see. No. Will they do your check for Horvat straight up? No. Okay. So this is a tough deal to swing. It was worth trying anyways. I mean, this is the nature of trade difficulty and hard. It's gonna be really hard to rebuild this team here. We're gonna try uh, Denton Matejchuk. So another D prospect or their 12th overall pick. And we'll see if we can get a fourth round pick back next year as well, just to make sure that we're getting. Uh, so yeah, they're not interested in really moving that player either. Let's see. Okay, so we have just traded Bo Horvat for Denton Matejchuk, the medium elite defender, Columbus's third best prospect. So we'll see if uh, the fans would be too happy about that one, but that's gonna be a big piece for us moving forward, really helps our prospect system. So if we take a look at the current draft class as well, like we are really building for the future here now. We have two second round picks, we have three third round picks, two fourth round picks, and a seventh round pick. And we've just acquired Denton Matejchuk straight up. I mean, trading for defensemen is really tough because all teams need defensemen. So that's going to hopefully help us a lot in the future. Now, our next deal will be for Miller. One team that I could consider trading for Miller would maybe be a team like the Buffalo Sabres or maybe the Philadelphia Flyers. I could see as being a Miller candidate here. Uh, maybe we'll see what the Flyers have that could interest us. So first things first, we're going to have to take back some salary. If we're going to take back salary, we want to take back some salary that is going to expire relatively soon. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna build the foundation of our trade around Cam Atkinson to take back actually more money here, but to monetize Miller basically and lose that long-term commitment. So again, we don't plan to win in two years. So we'll look to take back some assets here. So if we can get a first from them, that would be awesome. So I think this is actually probably about as good as we're gonna be able to do here in a deal for Miller. So we'll see if they do this deal. I highly doubt again that they're gonna accept this. Yeah. For our Miller trade, another thing that we are going to attempt will be to just find a trade for him. We'll see if anybody's interested. So there's only really one one proposal here. I think that's realistic in the sense that the, that the Hurricanes would want to trade for Miller. But one thing I don't like here is that... Uh, yeah, I feel like the Canes would never do this. Also, these are these are not great prospects. Like they're a little bit old at all. So let's see, I'm gonna add uh, Jordan Stahl here. A $5.9 million deal for one year in order to help with their cap a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's a realistic deal for JT Miller. We get two two kind of B-level B prospects and a second round pick, and we take back some salary to help out the Carolina Hurricanes, at least for this year. Now we'll take a look at our situation. Basically, Garland and Besser still remaining, along with Hoglander and Pod Colson. Unfortunately, we were not able to get any first round picks for our players, which was really too bad but that was the best we could do in the deals. Now, I think our next move is going to be a Thatcher Demko trade. So we'll start by looking for some proposals from other teams on Thatcher Demko. So, I mean, not great offers either. We're really selling low on this player here, which is really unfortunate. I mean, he's playing in the minors right now, so maybe we can hold on Thatcher Demko for a bit. So looking at our lines, 
as you can see, we've really weakened the team quite a lot, removing some of those players for futures. On defense, we're still more or less the same. Like, I mean, we have we have a lot of draft picks going into this year, which is good. But I mean, certainly there's more work to be done. It's really disappointing that we just really weren't able to get much back for our players. But I mean, that's the situation that the Canucks are in right now. They they really don't have a lot of assets with really any value. And they just had all of those bloated contracts. So even when we're blowing it up, we really just, I mean, we traded our best players and we really couldn't get back. We really couldn't get much back for them, but that's what it's. I think it's going to be like in real life. I think people are going to be really surprised when they eventually trade out somebody like Horvat and we just don't get back as much as we, we thought we would. Because I just think that Vancouver fans overvalue their players. All right, so it is November 16th. We're going to stop here for today. As you can see, the Canucks record is not good. That cataclysmic detonation getting rid of Miller and Horvat has led to a 5-9-3 and three record. So in the next video, we'll pick up with some more simulating and we will attempt to trade hopefully Garland and Horvat. But thank you for watching this first video in a rebuilding the Canucks series for NHL 23. I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.